So my last video ended on a cliffhanger. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll link it up here at the top. It was a rundown of how much it was going to cost you to buy a standalone vocal booth in 2020. Uh, I don't really recommend watching it. It's, it was bad. Uh, and it's probably outdated at this point, too. But one glaring omission from it was from Studio Bricks. They hadn't gotten back to me at the time that I was uh, recording, recording the video. And, well, a lot of time has passed and a lot has happened since then. And <laughs> my bank account hates me for it. All the different choices from all the different manufacturers, including just building it our damn self, we went with the Studio Bricks. Studio Bricks are vocal booths that are designed to be modular, meaning that you can add or subtract bricks, walls, or heights because they come shipped to you almost like giant Lego blocks. You can see videos of it on the Studio Bricks website of it being assembled and what these blocks look like. Vocal booths from the factory come made out of MDF board. MDF is compressed wood that's very dense and very heavy, and that's where most of the sound rejection comes from in a single wall design, is one single wall of MDF board with carpeting and other material on top of it. A double wall design is two of these slabs with either air or an insulation material to add sound rejection. In some cases, some vocal booths come with what are called triple wall designs, which is, like it says, three sheets of MDF with either air or insulation in between for sound rejection. Studio bricks are double wall design only, which means they have one slab of MDF, an insulation material, and another piece of MDF over each one of the individual bricks. Holding up this slab of MDF, you can see how much thicker the material is that it's giving you sound rejection in a studio bricks versus a single wall design. Now, because Studio Bricks are so modular, customization is astounding. Whatever color you want, whatever foam color you want, size, dimensions, the sky's the limit, but your budget also has to be unlimited. Now, Studio Bricks solves this by giving us regular people a production model called the Studio Bricks One. Our model is the Studio Bricks One Plus. Studio Bricks are only available starting with the double wall design which is a big reason why they cost more than most other booths starting out. Their baseline model is called the Studio Bricks 1. The Studio Bricks 1 line is a mass production model in the Studio Bricks catalog. Being manufactured in Spain, a custom order could take weeks or months to manufacture and ship to you. The Studio Bricks 1 line was designed to be a mass uh, standard product that could be sitting in uh, a warehouse waiting for your order, drastically cutting down shipping times. And because it's a bulk shipping product, you save a lot on that cost of shipping because it's spread out over dozens of models. Sizing of a standard Studio Bricks 1 model is roughly 3 feet by 4 feet in the interior. We have the 1 Plus model, which is roughly 3 feet by 5 feet. Both booths have an interior height of just under 7 feet, and if you're a tall boy, you can order an extra row of bricks to raise that ceiling height for you but you need to take into extra considerations the space in your room, which we'll talk about later. Each booth comes equipped standard with acoustic panels from Vicoustic. These panels are glued and installed on the wall bricks from the factory. You also get this ridiculously heavy double glass door, carpet, uh, a cable tunnel, and an LED light. You also get this tiny little bottle of lacquer in case you get any scratches during shipping, during movement, and you just want to keep this thing looking nice. Invoice separately, but included with every order of Studio Bricks, you can't get out of it, is their quiet ventilation fan. Now, like I said, these booths are shipped in bulk, so you save on the shipping cost. For each one of these booths in the one model line, shipping will run you about $1,200. So let's talk price. In May of 2020, the Studio Bricks 1 was quoted to me at $6,830 for just the booth, not including shipping or any accessories. The Studio Bricks One Plus was only $800 more, and that runs about $7,705 US. Also available is the Studio Bricks One XXL, model costing $1,000 more than the One Plus model for just an extra foot of length. I'll pause here to let you make your own joke about that. All that money spent already and you have bought 
an empty box. Now it's time to fill that space with equipment. Stands, mics, furniture. But Studio Bricks has thought ahead with a voice actor in mind. Introducing the VoiceOver Edition Options Package. For an extra $1,200, you can include a built-in table, a Yellowtech mic stand, an iPad slash copy holder, Mogami XLR cable, Vicoustic bass trap, an extra Vicoustic panel, and this dinky no-name monitor mount. All these items except for the monitor mount will become pre-installed or pre-drilled on a brick for you from the factory. Bring in the final cost and the charge on your credit card to $8,030 for the one model and for the one plus $8,905. Now that we have a less empty box, we still need to buy more stuff. Hopefully this is all stuff that you already have before you invested in this. Starting with the interface, we have a Scarlett Solo 2i2 Gen 2, which cost me about $250 because I bought the kit that includes headphones, a mic, and cable. Which would have been perfectly acceptable to stop there. But no. For a microphone, we have the Aston Origin, a large condenser microphone running about $300. With this microphone, we have the shock mount and pop filter from Aston Microphones as well, costing $120. And you know, I'd love to do a video just on the Aston Origin. I think it's being completely slept on. I've gotten a bunch of compliments from engineers that have listened to it for the first time. Check one out. Headphones are the Audio-Technica ATH MX50X, which costs new $150. Finally, all this runs into my just won't die already 2014 MacBook Pro, which new cost me, I think, $2,300. I don't know, that was like 2014 money, which was a billion years ago, so it might be like 10 grand now, who knows. Hey, if I was good at math, I wouldn't have bought all this stuff. For a doll, we keep it super simple with Twisted Wave, which I think a license costs $20 for. Buy your software, people. Twisted Wave is awesome and it's a one-man operation, so you're supporting a person, not a company. Also included, we have a second monitor, a 27-inch 4K display that we picked up for, I think, $300. So we can keep the computer outside because fans go burr. You don't have to go this large, you don't have to do 4K. I went 4K because the scaling with Apple, it, it, it looks better because the Apple displays are great. And I wanted a large display so when we're in here editing in Twisted Wave uh, inside the booth, we can have a large display. 27 inches is about the max that you could fit in the space between where Studio Bricks puts the mount for your microphone and your copy stand. And finally, because I'm extra, an iPad to read copy from. The one we have here is from 2015. I got it free from work, but we're planning on updating to the latest iPads so we can have Apple Pencil support. So we're gonna just add that onto the list for another $1,000. Bringing the total to $13,345 US to sound like this. Hit the like button down below. Make sure to subscribe as well as hit the notification bell. I got a whole bunch of video ideas that I'm working on and I hope you all enjoy them. So now that we are in our booth, let's talk cons of the Studio Bricks. Which is great because I can now read the script here on the copy stand. In a previous video quoting vocal booth prices, I couldn't give you a quote on Studio Bricks because they never got back to me. The first time. A week later, I sent a second attempt through their website. And weeks later, I finally got a response. You see, the Studio Bricks US team is only about three or four people. Being based in New York in the spring of 2020, working remotely when every voice actor is in a mad rush to get a home studio set up quick, they were behind on communication. Really have to keep in mind the times that we live in and give them the benefit of the doubt, but communications were slow. When I could get a hold of them though, they were extremely helpful, so just overwhelmed. Hopefully now that we're all adjusting to the mess, things go a lot smoother. Next, let's talk shipping. While you could lock out an order from a lot that I was already in the United States, I didn't and my order was in a lot being shipped on a ship from Spain to the port of Los Angeles. It took in total a month from order to delivery. 
let's talk about that delivery. Unless you pay extra and arrange with the delivery company, the delivery company is just going to drop it on your driveway or sidewalk or whatever, it's up to you, and you need to be ready to move it. Communication for this move didn't really happen, and my wife, who is scrappy but tiny, was surprised by the delivery. Luckily, the poor coordination worked out in our favor because the delivery company only sent out one driver, and he physically could not roll this 3,000 pound box with all the parts onto over the curb into our driveway. Thankfully, he was an excellent person. He helped my wife open the box and move each individual piece into our garage where she could have help with her brother assembling it later. This thing is heavy. While yes, it is modular and can break into easily movable pieces, each of those pieces is gonna weigh about 50 or 60 pounds a piece. With this door being probably 130 pounds, maybe more, get some friends and get some beer and pizza. Really, really good beer and pizza if you are thinking of taking this thing anywhere near stairs. Now this next bit isn't Studio Brick's fault and is a risk you're gonna take with anything you have shipped in bulk, shipped by freight, something that needs a forklift. A forklift. A forklift. Yeah, nine grand of equipment was hit by a forklift. Luckily, none of the bricks themselves were damaged, so the booth was not compromised. But a large chip was taken out what was essentially a trim piece uh, up around the top of the ceiling that's used to hide the gap between the walls and the ceiling brick. When I contacted the Studio Bricks team, the CEO himself reached out to me with options to make it right, which he totally didn't have to do. He could have just given it to insurance. He offered to send a replacement trim piece or refund a discount uh, back to us for the damage. Again, I think this is excellent customer service since again, it's not their fault. <laughs> they could choose to do nothing. It was just a risk that we took. I chose not to take anything and have left the chip there kind of as a reminder that this booth is a tool. Expensive, yes, but it's a tool. It's, it's a work truck. If, if Porsche made work trucks. Finally, Studio Bricks isn't soundproof. It greatly reduces noise, but it is not an end-all be-all solution. Your sound will still bleed through it if the sound is right outside the booth, or it is still really, really loud. Dogs barking, kids barking, garbage disposals barking. Wait, a couple of things that we did that can help. First, place your studio bricks on the ground floor. Even better if you do not have a basement because then it is sitting essentially on a concrete slab. Second, separate your booth from the wall. George the Tech, if you haven't heard of him, he runs a podcast called VOBS and is an excellent resource when it comes to how to set up a home studio and how to tune it. We phoned in to have this studio tuned with a stack because my wife is ready to record right now. I probably should have that price, but I'm not going to. He says that your house, think of it like a drum. If there's sound coming through the walls, it's not coming through just this one wall. Everything is attached, and if your home is built right, attached tightly. So it's going to shake everything like the skin of a drum. If there's sound coming through the walls, it's shaking all the walls because all the walls are connected. Second, get a mic with a high pass filter. Most of the noise that does get through is gonna be in the bass frequencies. That high pass filter will cut all of that out substantially. And if you have an RMS meter, you're gonna see a noticeable dip with that high pass filter turned off versus when you have it turned on and it's filtering out those low frequencies. So, elephant in the room. Was it worth it? You know, for most people, probably not. Training and skill is gonna be a far better investment of your money and will take you further than equipment will. Anna Brisbane, or Brizzy Voices, she records from the back of her closet for massive big budget projects in between her neighbor flushing the toilet. And you can too, that equipment has nothing to do with this. Don't get me wrong, this solution was right for us. 
in our house, in our space. Could I have built a larger space with better sound, with some 2x4s, some rock wool? You can find videos all over the place. Yes, well, me, probably not. But I could have hired someone. If you have the skills or the resources or connections, hell yes, go that route. I've seen some stuff on YouTube. P people's solutions are amazing. But building your own requires a lot of involved work. And my day job is a double-edged sword. Yes, it allows me to afford all of this, and that, that is great. But I'm gone from home a lot. Too long sometimes. And with my wife just cutting her professional demo and needing a solid place to perform and start her path to her dream career, I needed someplace fast. And with 2020 being 2020, I needed a place where we could pick up and take with us if the work moved, and we had to move with the work. I paid for convenience. I paid a very steep price for convenience. So this was our solution. Hopefully a place I can make this wildly delusional dream career a reality to. And I wish you the best of luck in pursuing your dream as well. Thank you very much. I'm Steven Diaz. Thank you for watching.